Welcome. I'm Suzette McHugh, and I'm the Industry Partnership Coordinator at North Monco Technical Career Center. Today, we're going to take a look inside North Monco and learn more about what it has to offer. And joining me now are Nicole Lucas, cosmetology instructor, and Bonnie Taylor, who is also a cosmetology student at North Monco. And I want to thank you both for being here today. I also want to talk about how people don't really know what North Monco has to offer, and that's why I asked you to join us today. There's Skills USA is one of the activities that students at North Monco get involved with. And technical schools, people understand what Skills USA is, but for others, outsiders, people watching, they may not understand what Skills is. So I'd like to discuss that. And I guess how we can relate Skills, it's similar to maybe a student council for a traditional high school. So what can you tell us about Skills at North Monco, Nicole? It is a national organization that is run by technical schools. Um, it benefits any students that are looking to get into any technical career or even a um, service career with leadership, um, teamwork. They offer scholarships for them to go on to college or other technical schools in their future. So you mentioned leadership. How is that? developed at North Monco then? We have different activities. A lot of the activities that we have, we throw in some team building and leadership skills through some fun activities that the students don't even know they're having, um, some team building. One of the things that we've done was a pumpkin chucking contest where they had to come up with some sort of catapult to throw their pumpkin the furthest. And with that, that was a lot of leadership roles that somebody had to take charge of it, plus the other students that would have to be team building. Um, we also do other activities. We just came back from the Poconos from a leadership conference that schools from all over Montgomery County participate in, and the students go through a year um, in a fake high school trying to come up with um, different activities, different fundraisers, social activities for a, a school. That's great. Now, Bonnie, you're one of the leaders for Skills USA at North Monco. Can you tell us about that? Um, well, I'm currently the vice president of Skills USA for our school. Um, I do, or I am part of the running of the uh, meetings we have. We have monthly meetings, and we discuss what we're doing in that month to get students more involved with skills and to, I guess, be more um, happy about it or want to do it more. Right, because we're coming, it's five different school districts are sending their students to North Monco. So it, you need a way to unite all those students because it's not like everyone's been friends since kindergarten. So it's a great way to unite people. Did you get to participate in the leadership conference? I did. This is my second year that I've gone to the Poconos. So can you tell us about it? It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, we get divided up amongst the schools that go into our own little schools and we have our own council and we make a binder of yearly activities that we'd like to do for skills. So you're not necessarily with your friends, you have to step out of the box and... You make a whole lot of new friends. Do you? Do you stay friendly with them afterwards then? Yeah, we stay connected over like the internet and or texting. Oh, that's great. Now, what other activities did you do there that, you know, you were able to do your leadership skills or team building skills? Uh, they did have um, team building games, I guess you could call it. Um, they're like physical activities or like sort of sport activities. Um, no one was really a captain. It was more of like everyone puts in their idea of how they think they could get the task accomplished. So it's a great opportunity to learn how to work together. It truly is. That's great to hear. I do want to go back to the catapults you talked about with the pumpkin chucking. Each year, the past couple of years, North Monco has had a pumpkin decorating contest where each program decorated their uh, pumpkins using materials found in their program. So I thought that was pretty exciting. But this year, when I first heard about the pumpkin chucking, I was wondering, exactly what this was going to be. But like you said, it really brought the students together and the designs they created based on their programs were incredible. 
Can you tell us about any of those? Because I think there were a lot of skills, besides team building and leadership, there's also math and science skills involved with this. Well, and actually what it was, it was came up with from a student at one of our monthly meetings that had decided, hi, hey, how about this? And I'm like, ah, same thing, ah, I don't think so. But then I thought about it and it really did, um, like carpentry, they actually built a huge catapult, which definitely the physics that went into it um, to make sure it flew. Sometimes it flew backwards, so they're still working on it for next year. I'm sure they'll come up with improvements. Uh, but they started, I think it was electrical that built a catapult. The first time they did it, it didn't go as far, so then they thought about it with either mathematics or the physics and kind of adapted their handle to it to see if it would go any further. We even allowed some of the labs that um, would have to get a little bit more creative, as in cosmetology, we don't have uh, wood to build a catapult, so some of them were thinking about using capes, and they just had to get a little bit more creative on the ways that they were gonna make this pumpkin go the farthest, and they had to work together to develop an idea. I think really, it really came across the, the teamwork and the school excitement, all the students, and like we said before, they're coming from five districts, and it really united everyone. Everyone was friends and cheering each other on. I think it was a great skills opportunity that people you know, chose to do at North Monka. That was neat. Now, let's also talk about competitions. Skills USA has some competitions. Can you tell me about them, Nicole? Yeah, they actually, again, it is a competition, student competition that is run throughout the district, which would include Montgomery County, some of Delaware County, and some of Bucks County, that our students will participate in. Each lab area, um, every program will have a chance to participate. Cosmetology will participate against students from other cosmetology schools in the area, um, welding the same aspect. And they have to perform a, a practical and a knowledge-based test and within the groups, whichever school comes up as the first place winner will go on to states, um, a state conference in Hershey, and they'll compete about against everybody in the state for that same program that they're in. If they win in Hershey in April, then they actually go on to nationals. And in the past, we've had some students come in. I think Megatronics came in second place at the national competition, and each competition that they go to, they get a little bit more, even some prizes that come, um, scholarships even at the district level, a lot of HVAC welding, those type of labs, they get a lot of scholarships even at that level. The states, they get more scholarships, and nationals, I think they take care of them very well. Um, there's certain programs that will actually go international too if they win at a national level. And the national level they compete against all the states in the United States. But it's to show off their skill. I think that's a great opportunity that just to see how everyone from all over the country competes and how they rank and just to make it that far. So I guess just to make it to districts alone has to be an accomplishment because you can't send every student from the school. Well that's exactly. you figure each lab can, or area of the program can have 30, 40, 50 students, so you're still sending your top students. So if, even if you make it into the district level, you're at the top of your class at our school, and our school has 1,000 students, so <laughs> you're right. at the top, even with that in Montgomery County. That's great. Now, Bonnie, not to put you on the spot, but have you been in any of the competitions yet? I have. Last year, I competed in the Quiz Bowl and we got first at districts and we didn't place for states. So what's Quiz Bowl like then? Um, it's just like a trivia game. They ask you a whole bunch of questions about current events um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so <laughs> is it an individual uh, competition or is it a team? It's a group thing. Okay. There's about four people for one team, but you can have more than that and they can alternate per round. So you're 11th grade, so I think that's a great opportunity that you were ex able to experience that in 10th grade then. Do you have any hopes to go this year too? Um, I want to. I'm not sure if we're gonna have another Quiz Bowl team. A lot of people weren't too interested in it, but I hope they are. So you wanna go for Quiz Bowl. Are there any other opportunities you were thinking of? Um, I'd 
maybe want to go for something in my lab, um, but if not this year, hopefully next year. Okay. So since there's Quiz Bowl, that's not directly related to a program. Are there other competitions that students can participate in? There are. There's a lot of leadership um, skills. They have a job interview process. They have um, public speaking, extraneous speaking. There's a lot of different um, just job readiness skills that it does not have to tie in directly to their program. They can, like the public speaking one, it's a prepared speech, which they have three to five minutes on a topic that is chosen for them and they compete against all the other schools. So in that respect, they don't have to be the top of even their trade area. They can be it if they're good speakers, they can um, do the different speeches. So it sounds like the opportunities it, being involved in Skills USA at North Monco, really the theme that I keep hearing is leaders. You're basically training future leaders for our community, and, and that's great to hear. Now, another thing I know that Skills does is different activities at the school. For instance, one of them is a breakfast with Santa. And I think when people hear that, they think right away, oh, culinary must cook the food for that. And while that may be so, I don't think they realize all the other programs that are involved with it. For instance, Graphic Arts um, creates the flyer for it or, or the tickets for it. How does everyone unite in, in an event such as that? And actually, a lot of times we look for volunteers throughout the school. Sometimes they'll be in their trade area, and other times I think they may have taken pictures of our cosmetology girls doing dishes last year. Um, the culinary students did get a kick out of that. Uh, so we help out wherever it's needed. Uh, this year we are going to do some face painting, so we're going to use some cosmetology students to put the face paints to work. But like you said, graphic arts comes up with the placemats and the activities our teachers is Santa on his off time. <laughs> so it's, it's a great opportunity where, again, different school districts, but everyone coming together for a common goal and the leadership, that is so fabulous. Before we finish, though, I can't stop, you know, not talk about your cosmetology program. And you are the teacher in the cosmetology salon that's open to the public. Can you tell us about the salon? Yeah, actually, we are open five days a week from about 8.30 until 2 o'clock. The students perform all the services. We perform all services that you can get in a traditional salon from hair to nails to skin care. Um, just yesterday, a woman came in and had a very bad experience at the salon, and we've been fixing her hair for the last couple of times she's been in and she actually made a comment that it's amazing how the students were doing a better job than the salon that she went to. So you do get a good experience and we charge for just supplies. So it's a lot more reasonable than it would be for a salon. Now do you have to make an appointment? It's not always necessary. I always recommend calling to make just to make sure that we have school since it is a high school. Um, and also that there's not a school function going on. But we have plenty of students, so if you walk in, we can take care of you on a normal day. The only thing, you just have to give enough time if you're getting any chemical services to make sure you're early enough. It takes the students a little bit longer than it would in a salon, and that's really where the main difference is. Right. The products, we use salon products. They're not cheaper brands. Um, the students do also sell retail products like they would in a salon, so they do have shampoo and hairspray to sell. It's just they're a little bit slower. They take a little bit more time. They're actually a little more cautious, I would say, than they would be in a salon. Right, and they're in training, and that's what you would expect in yes. training. Bonnie, have you had the opportunity to work in the salon? Yes, I have. I work there Mondays and Tuesdays in the morning. And what do you think that experience is like? I think it's very beneficial. Um, I get used to working with strangers instead of my fellow classmates, so I get to see what I am doing that other people like and know that I'm not necessarily going to be able to mess up and my friends are going to be like, oh, that's fine, like I have to actually make sure I'm doing everything correct and that my client likes it. That's great. Now, is this what you want to pursue when you graduate or do you know what you plan um, to do? I 
personally plan on getting my license. I'm not sure if I want to go to secondary school for it. Um, I might pursue something else, but something similar. So what does she mean by getting her license? The students in cosmetology have to get 1,250 hours to get a license to work in the salon, just like a driver's license. You don't want somebody driving a car that has no training. You do not want somebody cutting your hair that has no training. So they have to take a state exam that says they're proficient in doing the basic services. And they have to take a knowledge test, too, to make sure they understand the chemicals that they're using. So to work in the salon, they have to pass their test. Well, that's great. We hope, you know, by senior year you finish and pass the test. I want to thank you both for being here. And again, before I go, I just want to thank you, Nicole, for being here. And I do want to mention that Nicole was a cosmetology student at North Monco. And yes, was. she was also the first president of the Honor Society. So I think it's great that you continued in the field. And with additional training, you are now helping the future generations and teaching them. And I think that's great that you're doing that. My hair was a little bit bigger back then. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it went through many styles. <laughs> that's the fun part of being in cosmetology. Well, thank you both for being here talking about cosmetology and the Skills USA program. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to hear from students in the retail and distribution program. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Today we're taking a look inside North Monco Technical Career Center. And right now we're going to learn about the Retail and Distribution Program. Joining me are Brett Wagner and Chris Friel. Thank you both for being here. Brett, we'll start with you. Can you tell us about the Retail Program? All right. In uh, Retail and Distribution, we learn about many different things, actually. We learn about basically how to run properly a warehouse. We learn about checking in packages how to send out packages via like UPS, FedEx, etc. And what you do with that is when we receive our packages, we're the ones who actually deliver all the packages to the school, uh, to the classrooms at North Monco. And then um, they, they order the product and we just deliver it. And we also learn about how to operate a forklift and a Raymond Reach properly. That uh, forklifts are only used for uh, outside use, Raymond Reach is inside. That's to like get higher stuff off the shelves. And uh, there's a lot of training for that because it's a dangerous uh, operation. We have, a, we have training for that. You have to get a certification for that. And our teacher pretty much teaches, that, teaches us about that the whole time. You have to read plenty of, like, get notes, read the book. And it's basically what you can do in that classroom. So we're going to start with, you just told me a bunch of things. We'll start with um, the delivering of the packages. Chris, what is that like? You're actually delivering the packages with um, different programs throughout the school actually order? It's not just a pretend thing. Yeah, what happens is if I'm third session, so I'll come in and there will be packages sitting on the desk. We got a computer set up to where it's linked with all the teachers' names. So you log them in. You have to click this button that sends an email letting the teachers know that their packages have arrived. And what we'll do is we'll go around the school and in order of classroom to make it easier for ourselves, we'll go classroom by classroom of which packages we have. We have to have them sign um, the app that we have. And so that way if something got happened to the package or they lost it, they can't come back and be like, well, we never got that package, so what did you guys do with it? So it's just like a real receiving department where you're taking it and everybody's accountable for each step of it. Yeah, exactly. So you're not 
in the classroom, are you learning book work? Are you doing a little bit of both, where you're actually doing the packages? What is a typical day like? A typical day is usually we'll come in, sit down, our teacher will take our attendance. Um, we'll do some book work, and then if there are any packages, we will go out, use the Raymond Reach, deliver the packages, forklift. We, uh, we have to have a certain amount of time and training on those to actually get a certification and a license to be able to drive them in the industry. So that's a, a requirement, not a school requirement, but an industry requirement to have these certifications? Yes, it's a state requirement. So what does this certification do for you then, Andrew? If, I mean, Brett, I'm sorry. If you got this certification, how would it help you in your future if you were going to continue in this field? Well, um, not many people have these certifications because, like we said, we have to go to schooling for it. There's also a written test requirement to get the certification. So there's uh, warehouse companies always looking for people like us to operate the forklift in their warehouse with all their product. And it also is a good uh, pay job because, how, like I said, it is dangerous. It is a safety issue. But um, with the amount of people that there are, there's always spots open somewhere for us. And it gets, it's a good field to be in retail. Definitely uh, will help you out with your pay in the future to provide for your future family and, and be able to uh, succeed in life. Well, what made you decide to enroll in this program? Well, um, when I heard about North Monco, I actually did a tour of it. I saw a few classrooms. And I got to spend about an hour in retail with uh, my teacher, Mr. Shibuza. I saw what it was like. I was like, I kind of like this. I like having to be able to, I like hands-on experience. So I like working in the warehouse, moving packages, driving the machinery. It's really fun, even though you have to be serious the whole time because um, there's always uh, machinery moving around. It's a really great experience because we're kind of like a family. We all work together. It's great and it's going to help you, definitely help you out in the future. So you're saying we all work together. That was the, basically the theme of the last when we were talking about Skills USA and cosmetology, you're coming from different ending schools, and yet you all work together in that same program for a common goal. I think that's really commendable. Yeah, I mean, we have to work together to be able to succeed. We always ha we can't do stuff alone. We have to be able to trust each other to help everybody out. That's pretty much what we learned too. And that's what's going to be like when you go into the working world. You want to be able to trust your coworkers and be able to work together with them. Right. So it's great training that you're learning now. What made you pick this program, Chris? Well, I was part of the last cluster group that North Monco had with automotive. And like Brett said, we went around, spent about two days in each class. And just the feel I got from the classroom, Mr. T, he's a great teacher. I mean, he will work with you and do his best to help you succeed. And so, like he said also, I'm a hands-on guy. I can't just be sitting there doing something on a computer or doing paperwork the whole time. So it kind of helps me get out, move around, instead of sitting behind the desk all day. Right, it gets you doing things. Yeah. That's great. Now, Brett, what do you want to do when you graduate? Do you have any plans? Well, I would like to go to college to get more experience with this, like kind of a retail college to get a little more background information before I jump into the work field uh, with retail. I definitely want to keep going with this and do better than with this. Um, if I can find a good retail college, I would love to go there for four years or even more if I have to to get like more experience with it. But I just want to continue what I'm doing now and just continue being better at what I'm doing. What would be your ultimate goal, dream job after college, say? I mean, I'm not really positive about a dream job. I just want to be able to do something that's going to help me later in life. I'm going to, I want a, a good job that I can count on that I'm not going to lose. I want to have a career. A career is better than a job in my mind. Right. So I would like to have a career where I can know that I'm going to be there for a while and that I can get used to that company and the people there, like start a family, be able to trust them like I was saying earlier. So I would love to do that. It's, it's my dream right now to do that. So how do you think your training at North Monco is preparing you for that goal? Well, it gets us started on background information for that. We get the certification. It goes into effect when you turn 18. So that's when I can start looking for a uh, job to do with the forklift. 
but um, with the book work, you read everything, like all the instructions to do with that class, what you have to do. You know what you're doing before you jump into the work field. Like you don't want to go in there clueless. You have better experience than some people trying to get that job. So it gives you a head start on your right. Career. It's definitely it's definitely recommended like to get into there and get information before you go work. Very good. How about you, Chris? I know you have some exciting plans too. Yeah. Um, after I graduate high school, I plan on joining the National Guard. Um, right now, I have a job in the customer service type field, um, and it's pretty much the same as what we're doing in class. We have people coming down to the classroom all the time, needing things. Sometimes they give you a hard time. You got to learn to be able to handle it. And uh, working at Arnold's definitely helped me do that because I know parents are getting mad at me all the time because I'm not doing something but safety requirements just like at uh, Tech. So. Right. It's important that you learn how to explain the rules that people may not know even exist. So you're getting that now, you're getting that training while you're still in high school and it's helping you for your part-time jobs now and when you go into your careers. I think that's a great opportunity for you. Now, North Monco also has a school store that your program, Retail and Distribution, is in charge of running. Have either of you worked in it? Uh, yeah, I was actually down there on Tuesday. Or, not Tuesday, my bad, Monday. And um, pretty much, you just gotta, it's like operating a regular store, you gotta check inventory, make sure you're being nice to the customers, um, just, have a nice attitude and uh, right now we have a 10% off everything sale in the store during the holiday season so if you do go to tech or want to go to tech definitely go check that out before the holiday season day is over um, we got shirts hats mugs coloring books for the little kids uh, it's just a nice store in general that's great do you, Brett, have any experience working in the store, too? I do. I worked there a lot last year, and like Chris said, the most important thing is to have good customer service and have a clean environment, because the store is open to the public. It's not just, like, the kids that go there. So you'll have parents coming in. You'll have people coming in for, like, Christmas presents or just something for themselves. You want them to come into a clean environment so they feel like they're welcome there and they want to come back. Um, it's, like Chris said, we want to make sure our stuff is filled, and um, you just need to be polite to people. That's pretty much what counts, to make them happy, make them feel welcome there. You don't want to have a bad attitude because they're just not going to want to buy from you. And it's a great skill for many different fields. That's great. The product you have in there, is it students in your class that are taking inventory? And how is that all stocked? Is it, does it rotate through all your, the students in your classmates? Um, every day since we're open Wednesdays and Thursdays, every day our teacher will send down two different kids as a rotation. So everyone throughout the year is going to be working down there. You'll never see the same two people in their days at a time. Um, it, he feels it's more fair. And, and it's it a great, is, yeah, yeah, it's uh, great. To have everyone get the experience. Um, and even for the kids that don't know what they're doing, it's helping them to learn the system, learn how to work point of sale, learn how to be friendly and greet customers and just learn how to be a nice person. Right, and that point of sale program is something unique in your program that it really is, uh, you know, simulating exactly what is out in industry so that you're really learning hands-on exactly what you would do in the, you know, once you graduate out in the real world. Yeah. Um, Pretty much the point of sale works like we get our pack, we get our shipment of items. Depending on how many items we get, we click on the item that's already in there, add the quantity, and when we're getting low, it'll let us know if we don't notice that the item is low. So it, it's kind of, it helps us keep track a little bit better and helps us get products moving quicker. That's great. That's really good. Brett, what's your favorite part about the program? Um, my favorite part is definitely operating the machinery. It's, it's really fun to you know, be able to drive around the warehouse and learn how to use that properly. I mean, 
I always try to go on that every day just to get better and better, and it's great. I just go around. Sometimes I pick some stuff up, move it around, just make sure I know how to uh, move it the right way and be good with it. It's just a lot of fun being in that class in general with the people in there, with, with our teacher. We have a great teacher, like Chris said before. He really teaches us well, and it's just a great environment to be in. You're senior, but when you were in ninth grade or tenth grade when you started, did you feel the same way or were you nervous around the equipment? Did you learn the skills to make you more comfortable? Because I'm thinking somebody's watching this saying, that you know, sounds interesting, but yeah. I don't think I'd be able to do that. Yeah, coming in as a freshman, um, definitely wasn't as mature as I am now. So I saw the machinery. I was like, all right, I get to goof off a lot too. And then watching some of the safety videos, you're like, no, you can't goof off because one wrong move, that forklift tips, and you could possibly die. So you need to be real safe. Like, I know people watching are like, yo, I look at the forklifts. We're going to go ride, have a good time. But in all reality, you can't. You can have a good time, but you can't have such a good time that you lose reality and go into that fun, I'm going to do donuts on the forklift. Right, right. The safety is taught yeah. and emphasized, and then that's how you gain the skills. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I want to thank you both for being here today and speaking about your program. I'm really glad you liked it and really glad you're at our school, and we wish you all the best when you graduate. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like any additional information about the 22 programs offered at North Monco Technical Career Center, just give us a call at 215-368. 1177 or visit our website nmtcc.org. For North Monco Technical Career Center, I'm Suzette McHugh. Thank you for watching.